Brace yourselves for the presentation of the Blender V Dark theme. Hi and welcome to this new video. Today I will bring you this brand new theme which you can install by going first of all to the startup.blend file that you got in the zip and then you go to edit user preferences, themes, install, target your uh, Blender V XML file and then very important please click save preferences okay from the menu you can save preferences and from there go to default save startup default okay then you can close blender and reopen it again and make sure that you have saved your preferences all right let's go in depth so one of the problems that we previously have with the other Blender theme, with the default Blender theme, is that these little buttons that you're seeing right here, these pop-up buttons plus other UI buttons in the interface were very hidden. They were grayed out. So uh, now you can click on them and the user or the client or the video that you're doing can do jump cuts, for example, because you can now click on them and then they will be very highlighted, okay? Another thing is that you can distribute your interface by coming into this little corner parts right here, as you can see, um, and then you can right click on them and join them or divide them, whatever the case it is. Up here you have the render animation button, which is very important, and here you can configure your own properties in this way. So now let's talk about the practical uses of this. So the default Blender looks like this, and Blender V looks like this. And th this is considering that you will have more space, no bars here on the outliner. You will start your viewport directly on the camera view. When you're editing your UVs in the geometry, you can see now that they have been clearly identified in yellow and red. So whenever you edit something, you have yellow on the outline, yellow on the UV editor, and yellow on your mesh. And also the red uh, vertex buttons are selected as well. Primary and secondary selections are um, by default looking like this, but in the Blender V theme you can see that the active selection and the last selected icon or mesh in this case are very uh, differentiated here in the outliner. Again, we have the problem that we cannot see where this pop-up came from other than the arrow, but if you notice here on Blender B, we use the orange color for the button, so that way you can edit and jump cuts your uh, videos and the user will understand where this pop-up, for example, uh, very important editor window is coming from, okay? So here we have a problem, it doesn't know where it came from, this pop-up problem solved. And now the user can clearly see at a quick glance where this is popping from. So if you don't like the aspect of the boxes, you can come here into the user interface. You can open here box uh, option and here you can mark shaded. Thus you're going to get this kind of um, uh, uh, grading on the box. Or if you prefer them flat, you can just uncheck them. Also if you select your modifiers you can see the cyan selection is still active so this is very important because this way we can see that it is permanent selection uh, for the user wherever the user is going either the outliner the 3d viewport or the uh, modifier stack let's go into production notes now whenever you render heavy things you are now going to see your progress bar uh, in a green color so that it will identify that your process is ready. Collection coding colors have also been uh, revamped. We have now white, appropriate, black, contrasty colors so you can use and tag your collection. Uh, on the previous version of Blender we have that most of the bones are colored plus the channels in the um, in the F-curve editor are also colored bringing much noise, visual noise rather, to the, to the work of the animator. In Blender V, you can um, select the bones, but now all of the, the channels have been uh, neutral, neutral gray, as you can see here. Everything is darker, and you can also slide your windows, and you'll get much space right here. So this is the way intended for you as an animator to understand that you can also um, share between workspaces 
data like in this case you can see this yellow uh, low color for the dope sheet and also reflected on the NLA action so whatever you uh, create an action you're going to see the same consistent color across all of the user interface and when the clip gets created as an NLA clip you'll see a brighter brighter yellow color and when you tab on a NLA clip you're going to edit it in green color which is basically reflecting the way you were creating your keyframes before because keyframes are uh, labeled in a green color of course you have your rigify panel and everything works as you may expect again one of the uh, key crucial points is that you can slide this windows you can do this from whatever part of blender but the important thing here is that you can switch them around so that you have more space and now with that you are gaining more focus on your video or your presentation as well with this um, cyan tabs on the specific 3d viewport panel um, here again with grease pencil objects the user can identify clearly which one is the primary selection and which one is the last selected if you go to create a new scene you can now um, guide the user's eyes directly to those darker and very cluttered text area. Those are critical points to produce um, new scenes here in Blender. Again, if we have the NLA active, you can activate them and you can see those um, keyframes, uh, those transform keyframes right here, uh, are reflecting some of the animation channels that we have previously had. So here we go again, sub menus. This is another important thing because most of the times, most of the uh, window editors have sub menus, two up to three sub menus. The same thing goes for modifiers. Whenever we're working with modifiers, for example, in this case, grease pencil, I'm going to add a noise modifier. Then I'm going to switch quickly. And as you can see in this video, your eye is being quickly draft, quickly guided to where the pointer is, okay? So I'm going to duplicate this uh, grease pencil object, then I'm going to create an array. As you can see, we have this active on the viewport playing back almost in real time. But what if you want to do a depth of field? How, how does that work? Well, as you can see, if I select a camera, you have the camera selected on the properties down here. A 3D object will much uh, be defocused, if we can say it so. But if we take a grease pencil object, we can use the blur effect, as you can see right here, and it imitates the same principle as the focusing on the camera. Awesome. We have more things to show you. For example, the movie clip editor, which was a, a very forgotten area, now they have, now it's going to have this uh, orange tabs which contain very important features for you to track and work. This is one of the reasons why almost nobody is jumping into the um, the movie clip editor because they do not understand it at the first glance. They don't know where things are and it looks very daunting and much more if the functions that you need to be uh, having directly in the screen are not identifiable. Did you know this clip display was a button? Did you know this thing was a button at all? Um, look at this. We have search and then you can activate the information for that. And down here it's a playhead. I bet you didn't know this is this was a playhead. Okay. But if you're new to, to tracking, of course, you need to know where your things are seated. So once you apply the Blender V theme, you're going to get your playhead back in this uh, orangey color which will identify and you will associate the orangey tabs on the side left and right side plus the playhead that means that you cognitively are going to follow wherever these bright orange colors are now this timeline is orangey because i decided that this should look different than the other timelines because what you're looking for here is to uh, refine every tracker you have. The tracker can also stabilize and you can read the curves for the tracking nodes down here. Very important. Let's talk about sculpting. So if you have your workspace this kind of big, you can have your 
brushes over here like you would normally have but then you will have all of these other settings over here which are pretty identifiable if you're maximizing your screen and recording a tutorial now please bear in mind that if you were using a digital tablet these things right here just because the sliders look like this they can now be the focus of your attention when you have for example a low radius it's 10 pixels or if you're drawing or painting then you can have the attention on those sliders because you, you can complete them or deplete them like you see here this definitely has a look as if it was a video game engine which was also my aim I tried to um, create this workspace color scheme so that everyone looking at your screen will think you know what you work on video games and I really like it or any other 3D um, kind of animation that you can have it right there so that they know what you're doing because ultimately it's about what people understand what you do or what you click in the interface what good is it if you click over here but then this uh, resides gray they will not know if it was clicked or not but now a secondary highlighted minimal uh, icon option will appear in this orangey color and that concludes the Blender V Dark Theme presentation. You can get it for free at gumbro.com. Follow the link in the video description below. And if you're feeling generous, you can donate whatever value it is to you to get this theme. Donations are welcome. So thank you very much. If you got any questions, please don't forget to write them in the comment section below. Thank you very much.